Got to wait a few seconds here to make sure everybody's on and we say, all right. Oh, already got questions. My goodness. What is going on, everybody? I hope you guys are doing wonderful. Welcome to the pack. It's myself, Drew, and I have, of course, everybody should know by now, Mr. Lewis Sibben. He is uh, the runner for uh, Page One of Five and is on keywords, and he is here to share his wonderful, vast knowledge of Amazon that he's had throughout the years to help us answer the age-old question, how much does it actually cost to run or start an Amazon FBA business? Now, this being January and being the market share month, we wanted to go ahead and tackle this question head on because I know many of you have been asking. So this is our opportunity to help share that information with you guys, okay? So, but before we get started, I have a few house rules that I wanna go ahead and mention on to you guys ahead of time. Uh, of course, you know, with every single live, we do nothing less but to give you the best information that we know is available, all right? So first and foremost, what I wanna say is as you guys are logging on right now, you will see a notification that looks very similar to this, if not exactly just like this, where it says get all live notifications. What I need you to do is to click on this button and this will allow you and notify you in the future for any other lives we have coming up. All right, so no gone are the days of you searching up when we go live or us just telling you, uh, but Facebook will notify you when we go live, all right? And we also have a free giveaway if you guys don't already know, it's Kevin David's Unfair Advantage, the Underground Blueprint, all right? And this is what you could win for just showing up here on the live. Now, how do you enter? And I know many of you are asking right now, and if you're not, I'm asking for you. <laughs> so it's like this. See this thumbs up at the right-hand corner? What I need you to do is to like this post that you're watching right now, which is the live. I need you to type in hashtag live if you're watching live with us and hashtag replay if you're watching on the replay. And at the bottom here, we see this question mark with the little comment section in there. We need you to put comments, ask questions, help people out in the comment section because the more engaged you are, the more we are likely to see how serious somebody is about this business and we are more likely to select people like you, all right? So if you guys tend to these instructions that we have here on the right side, you will be in the running to win this book for free delivered to your front door um, which is Kevin David's book, all right? So now that we covered that, I wanna go ahead and go back to our main screen here. And I wanna say welcome for you guys again. We're gonna answer this question once for all, right, Lewis? We're gonna answer lots of questions. Lots of questions. We're gonna, we're gonna we, you know, I think we're gonna try and hit 100 questions tonight. We're gonna to try to hit as much as we want. So guys, just give you a recap. Right now, time is 5.34. We generally like to stay within, thir uh, within our 30 minutes, within one hour. Well, we spend the first half of the live doing our explanations and the second half the Q&A. Our goal is to go ahead and do our presentation portion fairly quickly so the way you guys can ask the most important things, which is the questions that you have, all your burning questions, how to get started, where most of you are getting stuck at because our goal is to allow you to move as quickly as possible. Um, Arnold, Arnold Loff say, is saying, can't see the video, it's green. Is anybody else seeing green on their screen? Um, and Mr. Puentes Jr., if if you're the only one that's seen green, I would say refresh your actual screen, all right? So guys, comment in if you can see us and hear us very clearly, because we don't want to get started uh, until everyone can see us very um, very clearly, all right? But in the meantime, I'll let Lewis introduce himself, and then we can go ahead and get started with this live. Okay. Uh, my, name, my name is Lewis, and uh, I, I've been selling on Amazon for a number of years. I sell my own products. I sell on behalf of other people. And uh, in doing that, we, uh, with my team, figured that we needed software to help us do uh, what, what we needed to do better. We needed better data. We needed more accurate data. We needed data that kind of got us the answers quicker. And so we created our own database, which uh, as of today has uh, 15 million keywords and over 1,000 uh, uh, over a billion ASINs, right? Hundreds and hundreds of millions of ASINs uh, in our database. That that includes all the variations and everything like that. So our database is enormous. Um, and we we um, realized that other people can make use of it also. And that's how we created Don Keywords. 
and then using the same skills that we use in our everyday business. So we came up with page one, which is our launching service. But tonight is not about sellings on keywords and page one, it's about helping all these people that are here to get going on Amazon. Yes. And Drew mentioned that January is market share month. What does that mean? It means the following on Amazon to get to page one, it's per keyword, right? In other words, there are many, many page ones per product. So if your product, what's tonight's product going to be? An exercise bicycle. I've got one in my office here. This is my home office. So I've got an exercise bicycle in my office, okay? There are many, many page ones for exercise bike. You could be on page one for exercise bike, uh, for a home exercise bike, a gym bicycle, uh, RPM bike. Each one of those keywords has its own page one, right? In order to get to page one, you have to sell as many products when someone types in that keyword, like exercise bike. If the, the guy number one is selling 50 a day, if you sell 50 a day, for a few days, you will get to page one. That's the basis of Amazon, right? Now, January, there's not that many sales happening because everyone's just come off this huge Christmas spend. No one's got any money because everyone's waiting for the end of Jan to be paid after spending all their December salary already, right? So no one's got any money. No one's really buying a lot, which means there's not many sales happening for page one, which means when it comes time for you to compete, to do giveaways, to do promotions, to get to that page one position, it's not going to be so expensive. That's why January is market share month, because you're going to take that market share easily and hold position one. So when it gets to the bigger months, then you, you're selling more already. So what you don't want to do is try and get to page one in the middle of Q4, right? Yeah. Uh, this is the very best time to do it. Awesome. That's amazing, amazing, amazing. All right. So uh, one of the things I want to do right now, if it's cool with you, Lewis, if I bring up the actual list, I don't know if, how you want to go about um, yep. starting off answering the question. So... Uh, I'm going to put up a graphic here, and it's going to be a graphic literally taken from Kevin David's uh, video, and I'm going to be posting that video in the comment section as well, or Kevin may be, if he's watching as well. Um, that way, you guys can know where we're getting this information from, and Lewis is going to go straight down from top to bottom, and guys, ask your questions as he goes down. We're, we're going to get answer all those questions afterwards, but we want to get through the entire presentation and then get to your questions, all right? So let's go ahead and hop to the graphic. Okay, so... so no, nobody teaches better than Kevin David, right? You don't have to pay for a course. The video that is being shown here, or this, this screen here, is a free video on YouTube, which Drew's going to share. Okay? So I, I recommend everybody who's thinking about starting to, to watch that video. But Kevin breaks down that you need software. You, gotta, you, you can't start selling on Amazon blind. You need to know, you know, the keywords to use, the search traffic they're getting. You need to know the competition that you're going to be targeting, what keywords they're ranking for. And I, I can even do some demo tonight of Zon keywords uh, with that. You're going to need to get a sample of the product you want to buy. Typically, samples are very expensive because the factory has to make a one-off product and then ship it to you. You're going to get your first order of inventory. We've guesstimated 1,500. It, it's how long is a piece of string? It's going to be however many you want to get. You're going to buy your barcodes from GS1. That's the official barcode uh, source. There are cheaper places to get barcodes, but Amazon recommends GS1. Shipping your $1,500 products into Amazon for your first order. You're going to do $250 worth of giveaways or PPC, and you're going to pay your $40 a month uh, professional Amazon account. Now, there can be more expenses if you want to go all out up front, or you could do it even cheaper. Uh, you, could, you could do a smaller order. You could not have any software. But 
what we're kind of showing you is that Amazon is not a game for zero budget, right? You need around $2,000, $4,000 to get going on Amazon. And that's kind of the, the, the number. So Tiff Everson just said, how much money do you need? You, you're going to, you're going to, if, if you want to have your own account and you want to have your own product on Amazon, because we can talk about other business models where you manage other people's accounts or where you go into a partnership. But if you want your own product on Amazon, with your own account, you, you're not going to be able to do it with less than three to four thousand dollars. Okay, Drew. Yep. Um, you want you want to bring our screens back? For sure. Yeah, yeah. Let me bring that, that down. Mm -hmm. Um. You you can. Kevin David is the best teacher in the world, right? He'll teach you all the information that you need in order to operate on Amazon, right? We can pay for a course and get it roadmapped from A to Z, or you can pull the different videos that are free on YouTube and piece it together yourself, right? He's going to teach you what to do. What we're here to do as business people making money on Amazon every single day is to explain to you what to do with this knowledge you now have. Right? So you know Amazon. What now? What next? What what day-to-day -day things can you face and can we deal with? And that's what tonight is all about. It's to say, okay, how do we get you going? You know, how do you how do you go that next step? Yeah. Yep. I think we can if 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 you want, Drew, we can we can we can start answering some questions because otherwise I I'm just gonna volunteer some information, but but I'll, I'll volunteer the information, you know, out of out of answering questions. Sure thing. Yeah, um, let me start from the top. And we do have everyone saying hello. I think one person had a, sounds like a praise report. Uh, this is Fabian is saying that I've taken the first step to financial freedom. Yes, you have for being here for sure. He says, all I can say is, wow. It's a little funny down here. All I can say is, wow, the best path to success is when they are losing you of what I didn't know uh, in this right moment. I'm going to be a video of what, I knew and what I'm learning. I guess he's saying he's going to do a video of what he's finally learning um, along his path. A perfect opportunity to. Um, th there are many ways to make money on Amazon, Fabian. Maybe one of the ways you want to make money on Amazon, if I can share my screen. Yep. Let me get you up here a second. Is going to our software that we sell. <laughs> I'm on my free trial. I'm testing a free trial here. See that um, right there. <laughs> and um, and maybe Fabian's going to make money by joining our affiliates. Which we'll be talking about towards the end of this video as well. Absolutely. But but he can sign up, takes one second, and then he gets given a link. And if he shares that link, then he gets 50% of all the revenue that we collect, we pay to Fabian, right? So if Fabian's going to start this journey, why doesn't he video journal his journey? Everybody wants to see it. Show us how you research your first product, Fabian. Show us all that stuff. And at the bottom, say, these are the software I use. Click this link, and then you'll get 50% of anything that anybody watching that video will pay. Yeah. So there's a lot of money that that's what I'm here to do today. Right. I'm here to say, what do you do once you've got the knowledge from Kevin? How do you make money from that? Right. So there we've just introduced affiliates and we'll talk it in in more detail. Yep. OK, I'm coming back. All right. Let me drop this. OK. 
Um, and I'm going to be, and I know you mentioned about the affiliates, but I'm going to be doing a, a snippet towards the end. If you guys are interested in affiliates, just stick around. I'm going to be doing a kind of like a call and call to action and giving you guys some information for those of you guys who are interested in being affiliates or know anything about being an affiliate. If you have zero idea of what I'm talking about, feel free to reach out to me. I'll be, I'll be happy to talk to you about how affiliate marketing works and how you can even get involved. Um, and we do have even another, another show coming as well, but I'll give you more information about that um, soon. All right. We have Mr. Arnulfo. He says Galveston, Texas here, Mr. Puentes. <laughs> and uh, everyone's saying, hi, what's going on? Hawks, what's going on? This is awesome. It's from Red Bear Apache. Um, we have Arnulfo again. Screen's all good. Everyone says they can hear us and see us. I love hearing that. Uh, we have Nick and John saying, what's going on, Lewis? What's going on, Drew? Of course, what's going on, buddy? Um, Kempire Youngest General says, how do I get my batch number? Um, not sure what you mean by your batch number. Is that something from your, from your manufacturer or something like is that? that? Is that a question that Amazon Seller Central is asking you when you're creating your listing? Um, Kempire. If, if it is. It's not a number that you have to comp uh, fill out. Uh, you, you can leave it blank or, or make a number up. But but um, if it's something else you're asking, you can come back to us. Awesome. Okay, yeah. So yeah, ask a, ask another question or just kind of elaborate what you mean, Kempire. We'll be happy to answer that. Everyone's saying hashtag live. Awesome. People are following instructions. Man, we have 80 people live right now, which is awesome, which is good. Uh, Kevin just popped in. Okay, cool. So he put in the link that I was talking about. Um, which is the video about how much it costs. If you guys want to watch that in more in depth and I'll bring back that screen again so we can go through again, if you guys have questions particularly, okay? Uh, what Lewis went over. Uh, we have Tiff. Tiff says, how, how much money do you need for Amazon FBA for capital? And that's what Lewis was just answering. Lewis was now, answering. So now, so now we've, I'm going to talk to you as a businessman, right? As a hustler to say, look, Tiff, Maybe you want your own account, right? But maybe you want to just partner with someone else and you each put in $2,000 each. Now, you doing it on your own is fine, but then you have to be an expert in product sourcing, in the factory relationships, in getting it to Amazon, in selling it with PPC. There is an opportunity that maybe you can collaborate with some other people, right? That's how it happens. That's how I connected with Kevin was that we we collaborated on our respective Amazon accounts. And then, um, you know, he, he did what he was great at and I did what I was great at. So what I'm going to try and bring out is don't follow the same path. There's many, many paths you can do this. You can do this Amazon kick. Exactly. Awesome. Awesome. All right, so we have Nitin John says, hi, Lois, uh, what is your recommendation on PPC for listing with variation? That's the first question. Uh, second one is, should we do PPC for one specific variation or all the variations? How is it done by page one? Such a technical question. <laughs> this question might be ahead of where some people are, okay? Yeah. Let's, let's break it down. I'm gonna talk as fast as I can. A variation is like, if you have one product, you can choose a black shirt, a blue shirt, a green shirt, right? You also can have two levels of variations. You can have a shirt that's black and small, medium, large, a shirt that's blue, small, medium, large, right? So those are your variations. Okay. Now, you could have one product that's selling and you could add another product. So you, you, you get your first, um, you know, uh, kitchen, kitchen towel, that's going to be your product, a kitchen towel, right? And you've got a red kitchen towel and a blue kitchen towel. And you've got a hundred of the red and a hundred of the blue. Okay. Now, what, what Nitin is asking is, which of those do we advertise? Do we advertise the blue or do we advertise the red? Okay. If you advertise them both, which is how most people would do it, they would just do like a single ad campaign for all of their variations, then Amazon gets to choose which one goes, the red or the blue, okay? You don't get to choose which one the ad shows. Right. Now, which one is Amazon gonna show? Amazon's gonna show the one that sells the best. 
Right. Now, you don't know if the market out there, the moms in Nebraska are wanting blue or red. Not, you're not going to know. And so if you start artificially pushing one variation over another, it could actually do you some damage. Right. So what do we do at page 25? We try and do things as natural as possible, as much as possible. So we let the market choose. So we would do the PPC campaign for the two together, and we would let Amazon put it forward. What does that mean? It might mean in one week you sell out of red and you're stuck with blue. Then we've got clients that contact us and say, oh, please, you have to push the blue. And we say, no. Guys, follow the market. Listen to the data. Your blue will sell whenever or chuck it away. But get more red. That's what people want. Give the people what they want. If red is selling, push the red, right? So that's how we deal with variations in PPC. Awesome. So you listen to the data in short and just kind of follow through with that. That's awesome. Great question, John. I really appreciate that one. Um, let's see what else we have here. Say, so guys, please invite anybody else you know to join on join in on this. I know this is a very, very popular question and we're trying to get to it. We're going through as many questions as possible and the questions are rolling in, which we love. Um, Nitin John says, KD, your book is amazing. Yeah, it is. It's, it's really um, hard hitter. Um, let me see. He says, this is Lana. Lana says, does Kevin's training work for us guys in the UK? Of course. But of course, you being in the UK, I'll let you respond to that from your yes. experience. Yes. <laughs> at night, yeah. In the UK. <laughs> so, uh, yes, it, it works. Uh, Amazon's algorithm, the, 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 the brains, mm -hmm. the methods uh, work on all the Amazons are the same. Right, so, so you could take the same strategy of how you do PPC, the same techniques in, in Australia, UK, Canada, whatever. Okay, that's number one. Number two, there are, I don't know off by heart, but there's like 20 countries that can sell in the USA just really easily by using their local bank accounts. They don't have to do anything, anything special. And so you could, as uh, someone in the UK, you could sell on the USA market if you wanted to, right? And then that also brings me number three to these secondary markets. And let's not look for things to be difficult because Amazon can be a bit complicated to start. So let's ignore Japan and China and India Right, let's just talk the easy markets, okay? Which are your English speaking Canada, England, Australia, and secondary markets. And should you go into a secondary market? And it all comes down to there are less buyers in Canada than there are in America, but there's also less sellers. And so you might end up with the same number of buyers per seller which means crazily you could sell an equal number of your dish towels in Canada than that you would sell in America because there's that fewer sellers in Canada. And fewer sellers means lower PPC spend, lower competition for the advertising, easier to get to page one because the page one seller is selling less. And so... Um, I always, you, you're going to just hear the same thing from me. Don't do what everybody does. Don't go onto the same market. Don't follow the same business model. Look and, and see if maybe Canada has got a, a niche for you or England or something like that. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. <clears throat> All right. Uh, we see here. Tracy actually responded. This is what we love when people respond in the comments. She said, um, Tracy Williams said, yes, Lana, I'm in the UK. So that's your testament right there, Lana. And uh, we hope that helps. Um, I, get, I get emails. I get emails every time somebody purchases a launch through page 185. Right. <laughs> Just got an email now. I wonder if someone was like, yeah, page 185. <laughs> yeah, wherever you are is amazing. Yeah, Nick and John, it will work in the, U uh, in the US or anywhere on the globe. You can choose where you want to sell. So um, let me see. Another question we have coming from Johnny uh, Sacritas. Sacritas is um, advice for first product selection and release so ppc plus budget yeah 
question. Man, I, I, I would, uh, there's so much going on for your first product. It's probably the first time you're talking to a Chinese factory. It's probably the first time you're specifying a product. It's probably the first time you're arranging uh, international air freight, logistics, whatever. It's probably the first time you're putting a product onto Amazon. Guys, you can do it like this if you want, or you can get a course that takes you step by step through all these things because these are very many first times, or you could maybe break it down into pieces. Open up your Amazon account and buy five or 10 products from a place where you live. Just get into the mindset of selling it on Amazon, even if you don't make so much profit. You know, buy it from an American supplier. Just have something on Amazon to sell so that your second product can be the Chinese product, you know, but at least you already know some Amazon experience. But if you try and do too much, too fast, too quick, it's either going to cost a huge amount of money or if you do it on the cheap, then you're not going to be successful. Yeah. Mess. Johnny, I hope that helps, man. If you have any other further questions, man, just pop, pop them down in the comments below. Um, next one is by Tracy Williams. We're gunning through these. I love it. Uh, Tracy Williams is, says, hi, guys. What budget would you allocate for marketing and advertising? Uh, what methods are most effective? And I know you, Mr. Mr. Launch, let's go ahead and do it. That should be your AKA name, by the way. Yeah, well, look, we, we run a launch business, right? So we, we help people. It's 90% of what we do is just email backwards and forwards. You get allocated a coach and they kind of take you through the process step by step. This is what we're going to be doing now. And this is what your listing needs to look like now, et cetera, et cetera, right? You don't need to use a launching service. You, you, could, you could do it yourself. Regarding a budget, um, it, it's, it's, uh, page one, if I is 249 for a launch 449, if you also let us manage your entire PPC campaign for, for a month, uh, that's all your, your PPC. Um, my rule of thumb is as follows. Your, your PPC, you should be targeting the ACOS, that's the number you look at to see how profitable your PPC is. Mm -hmm. That number should be your break even. Meaning, if you can sell that product at an ACOS with enough PPC spend that it doesn't cost you anything, you don't make profit, but all your other expenses are paid for. That's the target that we try and get to in the beginning. And any sales made by PPC drives the organic rank and the organic rank is what uh where your real profit will come from yeah okay? and uh and in in my accounts that are new and haven't really fully established themselves it starts out where about one third of the sales are organic and two thirds of ppc whilst you're finding your feet and after about a month or two hopefully that switches and then you've got about two thirds of your sales being organic, one third being PPC. That's the rule of thumb. That's what we're targeting. That's the budget. That's the budget. Okay. I was going to say, so there's no exact number. I guess it's dependent upon the product and how well it's selling. I'll say awesome, man. And what keywords are selecting. Cool. All right. Um, John, back at it again. Let's see what else we got today. I really love your profile pick. PPC, many chat with Facebook ads for a perfect launch. Page one to five for PPC. I'm guessing this is a shout out or not particularly sure if it's a question, but appreciate your comment there, Mr. Nit, John. If it is a question, just let us know. We'll pick it up again, okay? Um, P. Love, I love that name. I always see her. <laughs> How do I reach out to you? Um, I can say you simply just uh, the email again. What's the email again? It's a page one to five. I rank at page one to five. Rank at page one if I, uh, is a 24-7 serviced email and, and uh, we have a team of guys and, and you, you can just say like, you know, what, what, what do you say about this? And, and they'll just 
and you'll get allocated a coach and, and you can do that process with them. Yeah. And that's probably the best way the email, the support email is it's watched around the clock. So that's going to be your best way. P love. All right. Um, Afuno says, Hey y'all, how's everybody doing? Um, let me see what else we got here. Thinking outside the box, money excuses. Okay. What's going ham down here? Um, Samuel Hernandez says, uh, what will change in Amazon FBA in 2020 if I got in the Ninja family last year? Um, it's good. Looking out for looking out ahead of time for Amazon 2020. I believe they're still using the uh, same algorithm currently. Correct. Um, yeah. There's no say. I mean, I, I don't know what, what changes to expect, but I wouldn't hit. I wouldn't bet my, you know, anything on what to expect for Amazon's changes. I would just continue on with my business yeah. person. But, you know, you've got it. The, the, the fundamentals work. You've got to find a niche. You've got to find a product where page one has got sufficient um, demand, but not too much demand, where the products that are on page one don't have hundreds, thousands of reviews, that there's enough products on page one that have got less reviews. Why is that important? That shows, proves that they haven't been around that long. Therefore, that page or that keyword is a keyword that newcomers have recently attacked, meaning if they got there, you could get there, you know? So th those are the fundamentals, and, and they're not going to be different in 2020 as opposed to any other year. Yeah. And also another thing too, right? right piggybacking off what you were saying, Lewis, um, guys, when you're looking for your first product, and I mean, Kevin even says this as well, uh, don't get hung up on the ones that are like, oh, 30,000 a month, you know, 40,000 a month, because those numbers will attract everyone else. Believe me when I tell you, you're not the only one who sees that. I would personally rather have three, 10,000 a month products where you can comfortably, you know, you know, pick a keyword, dominate, you know, variate and have associated products that you can release along with that. So you can bu then bundle them. You have a lot of different options when it, when you go that route. If you go on the route that's more competitive, well, yeah, you have a shot at making that 30K, but you're going to be also going against up against hundreds of people who are probably trying to attain the same thing and who will do whatever, you know, I mean, whatever it takes, whether hijacking and you're going to have to worry about all of that, which then you're going to have to start looking at ways to how to protect yourself, which is through trademarking and all. So just be mindful of that as well. Okay. All right. <clears throat> um, we have... Tiff, Tiffany says, thanks so much. Great advice. Greatly appreciated. You're welcome. Emily's in the house. Do you want to bring, do you want to bring that pricing page back up just yeah. for one, just so people can see it one more time? For sure. Yeah. I'll do it right now. You yeah, this is what uh, Lewis is talking about. Just go, you, you go through it. Yeah. So what we're looking at right now is again, like a snippet that's taken directly from Kevin's video guys. Um, and this is the true cost of what it, takes to start Amazon FBA. Okay. Let's, so let's start from the top. So the software you're going to need. So software, you're going to need a very good software to help you to find and find those products that are going to be uh, profitable for you. Right. You're going to have to find out, see what's best selling on Amazon. And, um, you know, Lewis having uh, zone keywords, which is an amazing software that allows you to do just that. Okay. I know many people like to compare numbers with different softwares, Whatever makes you comfortable, but you need software. Now it'll run you roughly about $97 a month. All right, it's a necessary tool. The samples. Now, once you've found your product of choice and you want to have a hand sample to see in-house, to see how it really looks like, the different color variations. Um, sometimes when you make a sample request to be sent to you, it costs the manufacturer a lot more money to send them, uh, send you only one product instead of doing a large batch, right? And that's just the way they operate, and especially coming from China or out the country. It's going to cost you a little bit. So let's roughly patch in $150 for that. You want to test out quality. You want to make sure it is what you see on the screen, uh, making sure the reds look red and not pink, um, things of that nature. Now, I'll run you about $150. What I would recommend also when you ask for samples, just ask them to throw in any other things that they can fit in the box because sometimes they have a flat shipping rate. And when I was uh, – when I – had my store uh, up and running, what I would do is ask them to throw in some more products in there that I can see for myself. So maybe I'd like to bundle them. As long as they can fit in the box, we were good. So $150 for that. Inventory. Now, this is where things can get a little variant, but again, this is an average shoot. So inventory is one of those numbers that can be averaged. 
Um, of course, your $1,500, it depends on the type of product you found, okay, or decided to go with. And it also depends upon the pricing, okay? Because again, <clears throat> with the type of product and the number of products that you're choosing to go with, um, that will depict the total price of inventory. So we generally like to say to test the product out a couple hundred. So you can, I started out with about 200 because I was selling um, cell phone cases. I was going up against the big boys, the juggernauts. Um, it was against uh, Casemate. It was going against Otterbox. I was going against a lot of people with these big budgets. So for me, my, my inventory cost me about $1,200, right? Because I ordered like $1,500 and I was just starting out. And I was getting really antsy, but not knowing it was a competitive as I thought it was. So this was my first product and that's what happened. And that's how much it would cost me. Again, that's cell phone cases. Now, if you go for a different product and it's weighs a little bit under a pound and it's not oddly shaped or considered a regular product, um, then it, it may cost you a little bit more. So that's why I'm saying you have to pay attention to those numbers. So for, for numbers sake, we're going to say $1,500 given that it's a small, decent sized product, okay? Uh, barcodes, now you can get barcodes from what Amazon uh, recommends, like the GS1 barcodes directly from them. It's gonna run you about $250. And again, the barcodes are used pretty much, they're just UPC codes, okay? Universal product codes that that once you send over, that has to be attached to your product, and once you send over to Amazon, they use it as their FN SKU, so that way they can scan it into their system and recognize it um, into the inventory. And that's how they keep track of your stuff. OK, so it's about roughly about two hundred and fifty dollars. OK, um, and shipping costs, <clears throat> it, you can budget around five hundred dollars. Again, it's, it's, it's um, all due to weight and the type of product you pick. But for this particular example, five hundred dollars is roughly around the price you would pay. The giveaways and PPC we would say budget about two fifty which is the, uh, amazing because now that you have uh, Lewis here who can answer those questions for you, PPC related, um, you know, him having the Zon keywords and page one to help you get to the place that's most envied, which is page one. This is where the budget matters. You've selected a product, you got samples, you have your inventory, you have your barcodes, you paid your shipping and you're on your way now to do PPC giveaway to give you that boost to get to page one, okay? Um, and PPC is pay per click, meaning you pay um, Amazon to advertise your product to allow people to see it on page one. Um, hopefully that's where we are, but depending on the keyword you select, um, that's where that will depend. And giveaways, when you're doing giveaways to order uh, in order to artificially boost your sales, hoping that you it would stick. And that's where page one if I comes into play to help you with that launch. And of course, last but not least, is the $40 a month service that you pay directly to Amazon FBA for them to run your business, for them to for them to allow you to use their back office software to log in to see your sales and all of that. That's where the seller central fee comes in. OK, and that is the uh, $40. Now, for example, if you are in the beginning processes and you have your store up and running, but you didn't have any inventory that came in, what, what's going to happen is they're going to charge you $40 anyway. Now, what you can do if you didn't sell anything, meaning Amazon didn't do any action on your part, didn't you know send out any products or anything, you can call, and I've, I've heard had people say mixed things now, uh, but before it's always been the case where it's been smooth. Even for myself, when I would call, I said, hey, I didn't sell anything um, for the past three months. Uh, I would ask to see if I can get a refund for the past three months, please. So that way I can um, get that money back. And they had zero, I had zero issues with that whatsoever. If you do have an issue, feel free to comment in the group and tag myself, Drew or Rory, and we will be able to kind of dig deep, all right, to help you guys um, find a solution. But there is a solution for that. And again, my first uh, strain of attack would be to hang up and call again because you will most likely get a different person. Um, and they usually are, um, who's more experienced, they'll be able to help you right away. Okay. So that's pretty much the rundown guys of this exact, uh, you know, sales of what it costs you to run. Um, what I want to do is, you know, let me see if I could, uh, add this up. Well, let me add it up real quick here and I can just tell you, I know Lewis said just roughly it was about $3,000, but I'm gonna give you an exact of what I see on my screen here, what you guys are looking at. If you add all this up when 50... 1500 250 uh, 500 plus 250 plus 40 plus 40 
we're looking at $2,787 to the dollar, okay? But I would say roughly about three to 3,500. The more, the better. Of course, like with any business, the more money you have to offer to put back into the business, the more successful you will be because you have more money to, to play around with and to select different subjects, okay? So <clears throat> that's what that's what the magic number that everyone's been hopefully asking about. This is what it takes to run that, okay? Um, so I really hope that helps. If you guys have any questions of what I said or what I mentioned, um, of, again, just ask in the comment section. Lewis, I hope that that was what you were looking yep, for. That's good. All right. So let me see. You want to continue on some more questions? See if anybody yeah. says anything else. Yeah, I, I feel like the questions are flooding in now. Um, thanks so much, guys. You're welcome. You're welcome. You think, let me see here. Jamal says, um, do you think that Amazon FBA have a chance in Egypt or for Egyptians? I'm not sure if there's Amazon market out in Egypt. Not in Egypt. No. So you'll have to go on the Facebook group because there are people in every single country yeah. in the Facebook group. And, and in some countries are on that kind of list of 20 countries. I don't know that Egypt is, you know, for the USA, but did you know that uh, Amazon is opening in Dubai, you know? And so maybe that's a, a good a good market. These these really, really new uh, Amazon marketplaces are sometimes pretty cool to get into because um, because there's just no one there, you know. So you can get onto page one very, very easily, very, very quickly. If you can maybe get a wide range of products. Yeah. Um, that's yeah, that's amazing. Again, once you get into the group, if you're already in the group, Jamal, what I recommend is creating a post. Say, hey, is anybody from Egypt? I have a question about selling from Egypt. I'm from there. Can anybody help uh, you know a ninja? Out and I do I do recall there was a number of uh, posts on on Morocco. Ah uh, yeah yeah I actually have seen that people just put the flag there sometimes but I, yeah, yeah. there are people from there for sure. All right so Nit and John says awesome. Hope whatever question we answered was awesome so that's good. Um, so Kristen says just signed up yesterday. Glad to hear to be learning so much. That's amazing, Kristen. You're doing the the right thing by just showing up to these lives. They're completely free. Anybody who, you know, if you can't make it, obviously we have it on replay, but it's always best to catch us live because we can read your questions like this live and answer them for you. Um, P. Love says, how do we find you on Facebook? Not sure which one of us you're asking about, but you can just type in uh, at Drew Romeo and you sh I should pop up. It's like a professional white, ba white background picture of myself. And you can also tag Lewis if you have a particular question pertaining to him at Lewis Sivin, C-I-V-I-N, okay? Um, hope that helps. Um, you see, oh, I guess they were talking about Rory because uh, I see Rory is down there as well. But what you got us to? <laughs> All right. So Sammy R. Smith says, do you suggest I start doing effective FB ads while doing PPC? I'm getting destroyed on my PPC, but I understand it's part of the game. Ooh, PPC questions for you, my man. Okay. So should you be bringing paid Facebook traffic to your Amazon thing. What we understand is that Amazon loves outside traffic. So Amazon would love you to bring in Facebook keywords, but that's not going to help you with your Amazon rank. Why? Because what keyword is Amazon going to reward you for? Amazon has to put you on page one for a keyword. So if you're selling a dish towel, is it is it kitchen dish cloth, dish towel that's red, uh, organic cotton dish towel, you know, dish towel pack of five, w which keyword is Amazon going to go, thanks for all that outside traffic, here we're putting you to page one for, right? So that's the problem about uh, using outside traffic. That's why we don't use outside traffic. Right, we only do PPC. Now, you're saying you're getting smashed. There is a reason for that. Okay. Are your ads being seen? Right? So, in other words, are you are people seeing your ads? If they are and they're clicking on it and they're not buying it, that is telling you something, right? It's telling you that your product is not resonating with that keyword. 
right? Because if people were clicking on it and then buying it, then you would know that your product is resonating with that keyword. So maybe it's an auto PPC campaign and you're selling dish towels and Amazon is putting you, when people put in a keyword dish and they're actually looking for, you know, oven dishes and things like that, and they're not looking for cloths, right? And that's why your ads are not doing well. So, so if your PPC is not doing well, it's it's kind of um, it's very good market data. You've got to you've got to use it, right? Because in amidst all those keywords where you're getting smashed, in your words, will be one or two keywords that you're not getting smashed on, and those are the ones that you want to put all your budget onto, and and you kind of reduce your budget on the other stuff. Um, and so we, 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 we do that for you at page 25. Uh, one of the packages at page 25 is that we manage all of your PPC for a month and, and we can continue to do it on an ongoing basis. But, but that kind of is, is what, is what we do. Um, but there's lots of, of support on the group and Kevin has a number of videos about how to do that. Yep. And if you guys just name, we, you want us to share, we can share the whole playlist of what he has in regards to the Amazon, how to get started. For some, those of you who are brand new here, welcome. Um, that'll be a perfect place for you guys to start, okay? Um, all right, it says Anita here. Hello there, what's going on, Anita Atwell? Um, any advice on releasing a supplement? It's coming from John Socrates. I haven't released any supplements, and I thought it was gated too. Supplements are so hard, man. Yeah. Gotta be brave. Yeah, you gotta breathe. For people that are not yet in supplements, um, let me just say that first of all, you you have to get ungated and health or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, when I when I did supplements, um, we we had to pay a, a number of uh, we had we had to pay a fee to Amazon. I think it was like three thousand dollars just to be allowed to sell in in supplements. And then the the trouble is. Um, is is you have to get uh, uh, people to to buy your product, and and if one or two out of a hundred are going to leave a review, you know who's going to buy a health supplement without reviews, right? Not 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 not, not many people will do that, you know, um, and and so uh, su supplements would work well if you've got a community of buyers outside of Amazon, right? Because you're gonna to have to get those initial reviews in. You can't do it, you can't manipulate reviews. You can't be stupid. If you sell a hundred products and you get a hundred reviews, then Amazon knows that you, you've, you've, you've manipulated those reviews, right? Because they know that it should only be two out of a hundred. So, so we kind of say to start slower, um, and in, in our experience, you know, supplements supplements are very, very hard. In saying that, there are guys that are doing very well, you know, in the CBD oil space. Um, and, um, and, and we manage some accounts of guys that are, are doing well with, with the CBD oil. Um, but, but they had a big budget and they did lots and lots and lots of advertising to make those sales happen so that they could get their reviews. And now I'm wondering, Johnny, because I'm seeing his other comments, because he was saying, thank you down here. I have plans ready for the release of my supplement. I'm not sure if you already have the supplement and you've already gone through some of these steps already or where you are, where are you at in the process? Because you may have already gotten gated and, you know, at the point of just trying to get the name out there, maybe find different ways to promote it. Just let us know, because um, that could probably change the conversation and the answer as well. But you know, we were going off the impression that you're starting or thinking about going into supplements. And Lewis was giving his background on that. So, yeah, but nice question, man. Um, let me see what else we got here. How do we start a collaboration on Amazon for Amazon FBA? I'm not sure exactly what they're asking. Yeah, you just got to you just got to resonate. You've just got to connect with people in the Facebook group. Kevin's got one of the biggest uh -oh. FBA Facebook groups in in the world, and you just. You know, Tiff, as you chatting and you kind of come across one of the other guys and you comment, you say to each other and you kind of, you know, would would, would catch up and, and 
it's it's a trust based business, and and um, you know you you you'll, you'll find guys to to collaborate with. Yeah, that's the the best way is connecting in the group. All right. Mm, let me see here. Nit and John says just learned the other day that Amazon changed long term storage fees from 180 days to 365 days. Exclamation point! Exclamation point! Very exciting there, right there, Nit and John. Yeah, I mean that's news. You know, um, I think that'd be I'm not entirely. And, and I would like to see the article for that. If you have access to that, just kind of post it in the comments. I'm actually interested in seeing that. Yeah. I didn't see anything. Did you see anything about that, Lewis? No, no. Good. We'll wait for Nitin John. All right, see what else we got. Um, so this is Johnny's um, experience here. She says, I am familiar with FBA already doing that for the past three years, uh, but I want to start my own brand, which is smart. Yep. I think it's cool. Yep. Um, yep. Yeah, I think a lot of people that I've seen have gone one or two ways. People want to create an Amazon FBA brand to kind of like, you know, live off the profits that they pull from it and just continue the cycle that way. It will build up a profit. I think, I think you've said the right word, Johnny, because it's got to be a brand. And, and so if I was going to do my own brand, you know, skincare or something like that, yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't look to maybe start it only on Amazon. I would definitely have a Shopify Still set up. I would. I would advertise on, on Facebook. Um, I would. I would try and grow the brand. Yeah. And then when people would maybe like the product, they could come and look for your brand name on Amazon. That that would be number one. That would be um, also a way that you could get outside people to buy it. Because in the beginning, you need you you're going to need a lot of people to buy it in the beginning. That's yeah. going to be your hurdle is getting the people to to buy it in the beginning. Amazing. Yeah. Um, and just make very sure that you've got all the um, um, Amazon, uh, you know, health and safety and um, uh, hazardous material things sorted out because I, I had some essential oils that I was selling for a number of years. And then um, just, just last year, Amazon required all sorts of new safety um, products because these oils could be applied directly on the skin and, and, you know, we, we had to go through further um, things like that. So, so I'm just saying, just just do all your homework. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, and then if you wanna you wanna do your uh, due diligence, I think everyone here who's getting started have that in the back of your mind as an exit plan. Whenever you you don't want to have all your eggs in one basket, right? Having it all in Amazon basket. Amazon's a great way to fire that brand up to get it up there, be noticed, um, show proof of sales, and you can choose to sell or you can go open up a Shopify store like Lewis said. And just continue that way, and that's how people get a name for themselves. All right. One, one of the things that Rory's that Drew is going to be doing tomorrow night at this time is yeah is uh, is hosting a you want to you want to you want to you wanna share it, Drew? Yeah. So tomorrow, myself and Rory will be tag teaming together on. We're doing a Shopify build along store. So if you guys want to learn how to build a store and you already have a brand already, you have a product already. Um, and it's doing well on Amazon, or you just want to start venturing out and start um, creating a store so you can advertise and market yourself instead of going through Amazon's PPC realm of things. Um, myself and Rory, we're building a store from scratch. We selected a product last week, and this week we're going to take the next step to show you what it's like to build a actual Shopify store. So you guys got to tune in tomorrow, same time, 530, to be here for that. Um, again, bring all your questions to supply. Yes, for apply for people on Amazon because you can then take that product and go off the Amazon.com, you know, market and then go and venture out on your own market. And we'll talk about Facebook, um, Facebook ads and we'll talk about a bunch of other things, too, that may be helpful as well. OK. All right. We're coming in. Oof. I feel like there's a lot of questions. So we got to zip through these because it's 625 now. Time is like flying by. Uh, Anita, she just she just came in. So Anita says, "What do you do if you're if you source some products to sell from retail stores and Amazon asks for an invoice?" Um, well, I would I would start by giving the invoice from the retail store. They just want to make sure that you're not. Um, well, well, I guess they want to make sure that 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 you're not buying a fake product. And there are certain products that are brand gated, uh, meaning meaning it's a brand that you have to have permission to 
to sell on Amazon. Can I can I share my can I share my screen? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, um, I'm gonna go ahead and um, share it on here for a second. I'm gonna show you Amazon. the brand the brand that I love. Right, is a is a coffee machine. Right, it's coffee. Right, and so if you type in Nespresso. Right, Nespresso machine, Nespresso pods, kind of anything to do with Nespresso. This is on keywords. This is our, you know, our, our keyword software. Look, look at the score. You know, Nespresso has got fair amount of searches, but it's got low competing sellers. Anything to do with the word espresso is just going to have an unbelievable score. Nespresso ninety seven. Nespresso Virtualine Pods, 97. Yeah, you're not going to get a better keyword than anything to do with Nespresso, right? You're not going to be able to sell it. You're not going to be given the rights to sell any Nespresso product on Amazon. That's why it has such a high score. But this does give you an opportunity to be clever, right? Because you can go to Amazon and you can type in some kind of a product that somebody with an espresso could use, right? So you could type in Nespresso pods, Nespresso coffee pod, you know, and then you can see that there are other brands, other products that now all of a sudden are not Nespresso, you know. But people that are looking for Nespresso would buy maybe a, a carousel to hold it or a reusable thing or, or some kind of a way to fill, to fill your, your, your reusable kind of capsule. Now, let me, let me go one step further and let me assume that you've got somebody that has um, wants, to, wants to get into the niche of, of, of kind of clipping onto the the coattails of, of Nespresso, right? And, and you want to sell a, a reusable Nespresso capsule that you can fill with your own flavored coffee, right? You could, you could take this product, take that ASIN, you can go to Zon Keywords and go to the reverse ASIN X. That's kind of the most powerful tool on, on Amazon because it's going to unlock all the sort of information that you could ever want to see what's going to happen out of out of this product let's have a look and see what it tells us and it's saying that this this asin ranks number one for all these keywords Mixpresso capsules, Nespresso refill pods, you know, Swash Pods 12 pack, it ranks number two for, it ranks number two for best presser. It ranks for so many keywords. But if this is, this is what's so magical is that if you find this product, right, which is a reusable Nespresso capsule, and you can go to, um, let me open this in a new tab. And you can see if, if, if reusable, reusable Nespresso pods, I don't know if I've spelled Nespresso wrong. Yeah, I've spelled it wrong. That's why no one's ever searched for it before. <laughs> um, it's one S. Now it's not got a lot of it's not got a lot of searches. It's not got a lot of searches, but it's got a very good score. There's not a lot of sellers. And look at that guy that did it. He kind of was ranking for so many different keywords. So that's how I would um, tackle, you know, using Zon keywords and reverse ace and X, finding, you know, how to how to Go after strong brands without breaking the law, without having because 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 if you wanted to try and sell an espresso product itself, then um, 
Amazon would 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 require you to prove that you're allowed to sell it. Okay. Amazing. All right. All right. So I hope they answered your question, Anita. Well, I think um, uh, Sammy had a follow-up to his question. You already answered part of it. It was the one where he was asking, um, do you suggest I start doing effective FB ads while doing PPC? I'm getting destroyed on the PPC, but I understand it's part of the game. I purchased my second month of PPC with page one to five. Even though I'm getting destroyed, I understand that it uh, needs to be done in order to organically rank to page one. Do you suggest I start FB ads and should I create a landing page so I can retarget people? Kevin David's course is worth every penny. Um, so he's asking, do you suggest that we start F Facebook ads and, and should he create a landing page so that way he can retarget folks who land on that page? Yeah. Um, in marketing, the more you do, the more sales you make, right? So, so, so if you do nothing, you're not going to sell anything. If you do lots, you'll sell more. If you do lots, lots, you'll sell more, more, right? But, but we don't, we don't do any Facebook ads, um, and and so we we would rather keep at the um, Amazon PPC. Um, I'm gonna take your 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 name, Sammy. I'm just going to speak to my team tomorrow and just kind of find out what's what's going on with your PPC campaign. It can sometimes take a little bit of time to hear that it's we're into the second month and, and it's not getting better. Um, uh, let, let me have a look and, and see what's what's going on there. Yeah. All right. Um, <clears throat> let me see what else we who else we have here. Um, and this is from Anita at well, she says also, is it better to open up as a business LLC or just sell under your name? That's another famous question. Too. It is a famous question and you can, you can read it on Facebook uh, on, on the group. Just, just type that in business LLC and you'll see all the posts. There's instructions how to do it. There's the money, there's the cost. I, I am, uh, someone that would rather just get going and, and, and just get selling. And, and you can kind of tidy it up after the fact. You can put it into an LLC afterwards, but um, that's more about your business, your kind of philosophy in life. You know, you want to dot all your I's and cross all your T's before you start. That's fine. Yeah. But you absolutely don't have to get an LLC. Just don't let it stop you from getting started, uh, Anita. So that's the main point here too as well. Um, let me see. So Sammy Smith says, page one five is on point. It's the best to start with them to see how the pros do it. Amazing. That's exactly um, a good point there, Sammy. And that's what um, Lewis is here trying to say as well. All right. Uh, let me see. Alphaz. I'm sorry. Afzal. Afzal says, what is the best way for to do product research? Everything seems so saturated with high reviews. Where's the best criteria to search with? Um, and again, we're going to be also I was obviously talking about Zon Keywords, which is the um, software that Lewis is going to be mentioning as far as doing your product research. But as far as the criteria, I'm going to let Lewis handle that part because I know it's a very important piece as, as well, aspect. Um, again, I'm, I'm going to refer to Kevin as being the best teacher in the, in the business. And, and he, has a, um, uh, he, he has a checklist in his videos. And, and that checklist is, you know, finding keywords where, uh, and, and then you go through the checklist, you know, and it's, it's that, it's that the, the keyword itself has got a certain amount of search volume, not too much, because then you're going to attract other people are going to come in and take it, not too little, because then no one's going to be doing it. You know? exactly. And then the, the people on the page need to have not too many reviews. There need to be enough sellers on page one with not that many reviews that you can compete. But um, I'm gonna I'm gonna defer to Kevin. He'll you, you can can we try and find that video and, and yeah, I'm gonna um, see. I'm I'm away to give you a question so you can get going. I'm gonna do my best to go find it and head for it so we can put it. We'll definitely have it in the comments. Definitely after the live. I'm trying to get it during the live while everyone's here and present. All right. Uh, moving on to the next question. Well, I, also, I hope that really helped you. The criteria, Kevin will have it, and he does use specific criteria even in the course um, to help you pick one. But um, he has videos where he picks and shows you going live um, into a software to go and find these products so that way you're not finding saturated stuff. Okay. Um, this one is from P Love. I have a minimum of $4,000 to start, but not sure how to start and program to use first. Now, um, 
I want to take a first stab at this. Now, I'm not sure if uh, you've seen this, P-Love. You probably have. This was what I used to explain exactly um, how much it costs to run Amazon. One of the things that was optional that Kevin even mentions as well in this video is that, you know, an optional piece is that, A, you have two routes you can take. You can learn Amazon yourself by using YouTube videos and learning how to get started. Or B, you can find someone that you know and trust. Obviously, if you're here, you know and trust Kevin and his team and the whole community. You can find someone where you can follow their, their online course to kind of direct you and better show you how to take a step-by-step -step approach on starting an Amazon FBA business, all right? And this is what we would recommend. So if you're going down that route, um, get a course to better guide you to where you can then put all that money as well. This is the list that I used earlier. If you were there, you can see software, samples, inventory, barcodes, shipping, giveaway, PPC, because you need to have that if you want to have a really good leg up on the competition. And of course, you can't have a business open if you don't have the seller fee paid, um, and that's just a given. So these are the things that we would highly recommend that you um, make sure that you have a budget for. All of this adds up to a whopping $2,787. I just round it to roughly 3 k if you want to get started. You have 4 k and I'm not sure if that's after you know paying for a course uh, uh, or is that beforehand. If it's before, you have plenty to play around with. If it's... Um, um, uh, sorry, if it's after having a course or some direction, then you have plenty to play around with. And even if you don't have a course, you can still get started. But if you want better guided without spending much time hunting for stuff, that's why I recommended um, finding a course of somebody that you truly like and enjoy. Okay. Um, and that's that for that one. Um, we do have a webinar link in there. If you guys are interested in the course at all, um, it looks like Kevin posted in there and it's the link right after her comment. Um, he said we can DM Rory so we can deal with the concerns. This is Kevin. He's saying that um, any concerns you guys have, if you guys are planning to sign up for the webinar at all, okay? Um, you see where you guys are watching from, going through these. Nice, nice, nice. Um, Kyle Jason says, let me see. Us, a little as... You can't make. No, nah, I think this was a. Oh yeah, okay. So yeah, this was one that's kind of. Oh yeah, yeah. I remember that name. It's popping all over the place. Sorry about that. Um, you see, Hawks. If your page product gets, if your product gets to page one, does Amazon use the algorithm to get you off of page one? Sure. Yeah. So remember, Hawks. I just showed you. On. Uh, um, I just showed you, let's just, let's just, can I just share my screen again? This, this is quite a key, this is quite a key point, this, right? Yeah, we're sharing in a second. Yep. Um, um, we, we, we were looking at this reusable Nespresso capsule, and I copied the ASIN, and I went to reverse ASIN, and then I'm seeing here, every keyword that this product is on page one for and and these are all the keywords that it's on page one for and these are all the keywords that it's on page two not page two position two on page one and then position three on page one so by the time there's 890 entries by the time you're on page three or page four so this product is on page one. Um, I'm just coming back here. So this product is on page one. Sorry, Drew. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, I'm taking it off. So that product is on page one for hundreds of page ones. So don't don't think in kind of like one direction, thinking, well, there's only one page one. There are going to be hundreds of page ones, right? Now, for each keyword, it has its own page one. Whichever product sells the most for that keyword will be on the top of page one. If a new product comes along, even if you're on page one, if a new product comes along and sells more than you after people type in that keyword, they will overtake you. Um, and so it's it's and it's every it's every hour, every few hours, Amazon re, re, reshuffles it. You have to sell most for that keyword to hold the number one position. Awesome, yeah, yeah, um. <laughs> And the way to keep it is that you, 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 you have to keep your reviews good, you have to keep your price good, you probably have to keep advertising so that you keep your 
volume going for that keyword. Yeah, and I know since we're even past uh, 630, I know we're trying to get through all these questions here, but I'm right here. Um, Kevin brought up a good point. It's a good segue for this because I did promise this for 630. Um, since picture this, you do a live demo of what you guys are doing right now through, you know, doing product research for those of you who are looking for products or looking to start. And your affiliate link is at the bottom in YouTube. And every time someone purchases through your link, you get 50% of that goes to your affiliate account. And he, to finish off, he says forever while the person is a customer of the software. So again, so this is speaking to all the affiliates, people who are interested in affiliate marketing or affiliating this uh, software that we're talking about, right, Lewis, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. There's 50% of the actual purchase that the, let's say if I purchase through your link by watching your video, demonstrating how this works. And I'm going to be doing hopefully an example to show you guys how easy it is to do. Um, and you put a link down in the description of the video without being too salesy or pushy. Just say, hey, this is what I'm using. Here's the link below. And it's as easy as someone signing up. And once they sign up, half of that payment that they go that they go into um, paying that software goes to you as an affiliate because you brought in that person. So therefore, you have the current commissions. That's And that's real passive income. That's true. You can create the video once. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. And yeah. I have perfect examples. I can show you guys dashboard examples later. Like I've earned over $10,000 just from one video. I think it was like 12,000 or some change, but I can show you dashboard numbers to let you guys know this is not a game. This is true. And it was one video. I didn't make a follow-up or anything like that. It was one. So this is truly powerful. And, uh, we and, can and especially if you're going to kind of take people through your journey, you know, Yeah. So this is how I'm f researching this. This is what I'm doing. Yeah, perfect. Um, and Jamal says, thank you very much for the question earlier that we answered. So it's great. Rory, I, I think we have to wrap it up here, mate. Yeah. Um, so I mean, sorry, Drew. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> it's all right. Uh, we do have quite a few. I know that uh, even Rory was raging in the comments to see if we can um, get through them all, but it looks like we can't. We'll hang around and um, in the comment section to uh, answer all your questions. But you see, Tiff says, uh, Louis. Louis uh, says, great, great service and support. Truly appreciate it. Greetings from Iceland and Germany. So this, again, someone who's using the software and saying that they're having great um, luck with this as well. Um, can we answer this one last question? This looks pretty um, intensive right here. This is from Layla. Uh, she's saying that we just got an LLC finally. Question about credit card, using two credit cards. Recommend, recommended in the course, Ink Business Chase, Ink, Ink Business Cash Cards. Um, preferred cards, which one of them I do have, uh, so that we don't, so card, and we don't have a lot of capital to put into the business. Which card do you think it's better for our situation? Uh, depends on your situation, but from my personal experience, the Inc. business, uh, preferred card has been the best to me. Um, it just gives the best overall point value. It gives the best overall, um, uh, credits as far as when you make a purchase, if you're especially doing online PPC spending, I think you get three points for every single dollar that you do spend and, digitally. And um, guys, any person on Amazon who is selling has to do this trick. This is the easiest hack. On your Seller Central account, you can instruct Amazon how you have to register a credit card but you can tell under PPC how you want to pay for your sponsored ads, right? You, the default is that sponsored ads are paid for from your Amazon account and all the sales you make, that money just gets reduced by your PPC spend. But you can say, please, Amazon, charge me for my PPC to my credit card on file, right? Doesn't make any difference except all the hundreds or thousands of dollars of business expenses that you're going to incur during the year, you can get your three points per, per dollar from, right? Yeah, and so you, you have to um, manually go into Seller Central, just Google it and and um, change your, your PPC spend to your credit card. Yeah. And I mean, you just, you, you could do remarkably a lot more with that traveling, whatever it is, purchasing stuff through their portal, uh, it's just your, your, your points go a very long way um, here. Uh, I think somebody has a question that they're really dying to put in here. Um, let me see their name. Sorry, Chris. So you can find Chris. 
I'm sorry, Lewis. You post Chris's question up here again. I can't really see it through the same here, guys. We have our team working, guys, in the background, too, trying to get everyone's questions up into the main feed so that way we can answer them. We got, we got a, a question about what portion of the sales are taken in Amazon fees. Is that Chris? No, no. I, I picked up Tracy Williams. So let me just say that what portion of the sales are taken in Amazon fees? Yeah. Um, Amazon fees are made up of two things. They're made up of a referral fee, which is a percentage of 15%, which is, uh, that's what they take from you because you made the sale on their website. Even if you fulfill the product yourself, fulfilled by merchant, they'll still charge you 15%. If you uh, go into FBA, then they charge you the 15% plus a FBA fee, right? That FBA fee is not based on the selling price of your product. Part of it is fixed, like a $1 pick pack. Doesn't matter what the product is, but most of it is based on the size and the weight. And that's why everyone says how wonderful it is if you could have a small, expensive product on Amazon because your fees are relatively very, very, very low. And if you've got something cheap and big, um, it would be impossible to make money on, on Amazon. So, for example, if you were going to sell a foam, uh, the foam balls that go inside a bean bag, foam beans, right? Those big bags, very light, very big, very cheap. You, you just couldn't sell that on Amazon. It, the fees would be too expensive. Right? But uh, if you had something small and light but expensive, um, then then your percentage of the of the fee would, would be very, very low. Awesome. Well, that is the last question, guys. We really did our best to go through every single one. I do see a few down there. I will hang around in the comment section. If you guys have any questions at all whatsoever, leave us a comment down below. Before you leave, direct your attention down below on the banner below, guys. We are offering, and this is for Zon Keywords, correct, uh, Lewis? Yeah. Guys, so for 2020 is market share month for January this month right now. So we're going to be doing a uh, special against that Lewis is allowing us to have uh, right now. It's the Zon Keywords. You can use the discount 100K in 2020 for 50% off any package deal that you get via Zon Keywords. And, you know, you can't get I mean, you can't get started without a software to look up, but it's just going to cause you, you know, a lot of time and effort and sweat and tears unnecessarily when you have such a powerful uh, software that Lewis demonstrated earlier that you guys can use to shortcut your way to finding the hot products. Uh, watch Kevin's video, which we'll be posting in comments that's showing you what criteria to put in there to speed up that process. OK, um, again, if you guys are interested in affiliates. Tag myself or Rory, R-O-R-Y, uh, in the comment section. Put the at symbol so that way we can get notified and we can talk to you more about the uh, affiliates because we're, we're going to be doing a separate show kind of like this, helping people to be become better affiliates and how to affiliate successfully uh, mm -hmm. anything really, but we're going to be using the example of the software so that way you can get that passive income we were talking about um, and we can get you on that road, okay? I really hope you guys enjoy questions like this. If you guys have thoughts about other topics you want us to cover. This one came up so many times, right, Lewis? And we just thought it would best to just answer it for, you know, in front of everyone so everyone can get all their questions out, especially the beginners starting to get in this. You guys are no longer beginners. You guys have made decisions. You guys are now entrepreneurs and you guys are going through the process of what it takes to run an online business. And this is through Amazon. Hopefully this is the first of many. Um, and this is um, how much does it actually cost us on Amazon? I really hope you guys enjoyed this. Lewis, thanks so much for your time, my man. Um, you guys let me know in the comment section if you have any questions. All the links for everything we talked about, the package deal and the discount code will be here in the replay and also in the comment section. And again, I'll be hanging out, answering some questions. So I hope to see you guys next week, same time, 530. And peace and love, keep hustling, all right?